Hello guys, welcome to another video. This one is paper 2-1 of May, June 2013. So let's move on to question number one. So here we have uh, proof that this 2 becomes this. So how can we prove this? So let's do step by step as always. So we have to expand those two. So first this will become 1 plus sine theta, sine theta square over cos square theta plus 1 minus sine theta square over cos square theta. Now we can expand the top so you will have this is becomes 1 plus 2 sine theta plus sine square theta plus this one will become 1 minus 2 sine theta plus sine square theta. That is the expansion for those two on top and that will be over cos square theta. Now we can try to simplify to see what can we, uh, what can we have. So as you can see these two will cancel out so this and this will cancel out. 1 plus 1 is 2 so you have 2 plus this plus this will become 2 sine square theta over cos square theta. Now let's see what can you do. Now uh, we have cos here, we have, we have this here which is a good sign because we have trying to find tan square theta. So one thing we can do now is we can try to factorize the two outside. So let's do that. You have 2, 1 plus sine square theta over cos square theta. Now what is 1? One? 1 is equal to sine square theta plus cos square theta. Now we place 1 by this. You will have 2, 1 becomes sine square theta plus cos square theta plus sine square theta. Now all this divide by cos square theta. Now I'll simplify this plus this will be 2, so 2 and then 2 sine square theta plus cos square theta. And all this over cos square theta. Now let's simplify. For the first one you will have, so let's just take a, let's just bring this two inside, you will have 4 sine square theta plus 2 cos square theta and all this again divide by cos square theta. Now if you bring this inside you will have 4 sine square theta divided by cos square theta plus 2 cos square theta divided by cos square theta. Now these two will be cancelled and these two will be what is sine over cos? It will be tan. So 4 tan square theta plus 2. It is the same as required as this. This is shown as required. That will be question number 1. Now question number 2 we have a uh, speed time graph. So speed time graph. So here we have um, it is a motion of a particle moving in a straight line. Okay, so part one, find the acceleration during the first five seconds. So as we know, if you have a speed time graph, the acceleration is equal to the gradient of the triangle. So basically, the height divided by base. The height is 16 divided by base 5. 16 divided by 5, that should be 3.2. Acceleration, 3.2 meters per second square. Now for point B, find the length of time for which the particle is traveling with constant velocity. So as you can see, this is constant velocity, the length will be 20 minus 5, so 20 minus 5 will be 15 seconds. That is your answer for part 2. Now for part 3, 
find the total distance traveled by the particle. So as you know, when you have a speed time graph, distance traveled is area on the graph. And for this one, it, says it is the area of a trapezium. Okay, so we have this side is 24, this is 15, and the height is 16, so we can easily find that. Area in the graph is half times the sum of parallel sides, which is 24, plus 15, and times the height in between, that will be 16. So half times 24 plus 15 times 16. That should be 312. So distance travel will be 312 meters for distance traveled. That is part three. Now let's move on to question number three. Now we have variables x and y are related by this equation. Okay? For x between 0 and pi by 2, so pi by 2 is only 90 degrees. So x is an acute angle. Okay, so given that x is increasing at a rate of 0 0.2 radians per second, so we know that dx by dt, the rate is increasing at 0 0.2. This is given to us by this information. So find the corresponding rate of change of y so we have to find dy by dt, rate of change of y, when, so when y is equal to 8. Okay, so in that case, we have to replace y is equal to 8 in this. Let's find the corresponding values for x. So our equation is y equal to 10 minus 4 sine square x. So when y is equal to 8, what is the value of x, right? So let's find that. So we have 8 equal to 10 minus 4 sine square x. So 4 sine square x is equal to 10 minus 8 will be 2. So sine square x will be half. So, so this is half, so sine x will be root of half so we can only take the pos positive value because x is between the in the first quadrant okay now the angle x will be sine inverse of root half so sine inverse let's use radians root half that should be mm, we have this answer so let's check what do I get. So let's try again. So root half is 1. So let's see degrees. Degrees will give you sine inverse of 1. So that should be square root, square root of half. 45 degrees. So 45 degrees, now in terms of radians, that will be pi by 4. That is your value of x for which y is equal to 8. Okay, now to find dy by dt, we have to find the equation that to find this. So dy by dt is equal to what? Since you have dy on top, you write dy. And since you have dt on the bottom, you write dt. Now here we have two things to write. So what is in connection with y? You can see in this equation, y is connected to x. So here you have dx and here you have dx. So in this case, this we know already. It is given by 0 0.2. So we have to find dx by dy at the value of x equal to pi by 4. So we know that y is given by this equation, 10 minus 4 sine square x. Now what is dy by dx? That will be 0 minus 8 sine x times cos x, right? That will be minus 8 sine x cos x. So we have to find dy by dx at the value of x equal to this. So dy by dx when x equal to pi by 4, which is 45 degrees. So let's find that minus 8 sine 45 cos 45. That should be minus 4. So this will be minus 4. So dy by dt 
is equal to minus 4 times 0 0.2 that will be minus 0 0.8 so the corresponding rate of exchange on y will be minus 0 0.8 and radians per second so let's do that that is your answer for uh, question number three so let's write this down dy by dt is minus 0 0.8 Okay, that is question number three. Let's move on to the next question. So in this one, we have to. So let's just wait. So we have to sketch this graph of y equal to modulus of four x minus two on the axis below, showing the coordinates of the points where the graph meets the axis. So step by step, as always, let's find one by one. Um, so let's assume that we have y equal to 4x minus 2. Now at the x-axis, y is equal to 0. So the value of x will be half. So 0 half will be about, let's say, here. That will be half. That's the first point. Um, half is 0, right? Now let's say at the when x equal to 0, y is equal to minus 2. But here we have modulus. You have to be 2. 2 will be about, let's say, it's about, about this value. Okay. And the curve, of course, is going, let's see, in which direction? In this direction, because it was, let me use a ruler. The curve was supposed to go in this direction at uh, 2, but now it is in this direction, right? So we have to join this. And then this will have to go up. So reflection of this will be what? So let's measure. So it doesn't need to be exact. It just needs to be a sketch. So let's have a reflection. Uh, will be about in this direction. Keeps going on and keeps going on. Okay, so the most important thing is you show this shape and you show that it cuts the curve, the line at y equal to 2, x equal to half, and label your line as this. Right. Now, next one is solve this equation. So you can solve this using the curve or you can just solve this uh, directly as well. So this will be 4x minus 2 equal to positive x, or it can be uh, 4x minus 2 equal to negative x now we set x over here you will have 3x equal to 2 x equal to 2 over 3 now we send this over here you will have 5x equal to 2 x equal to 2 over 5 so in this case we have two values of x x can be 2 over 5 or it can be 2 over 3 and those are the answers for question number four Let's move on to question number five. So, a piece of wire of length 96 is formed into a rectangular shape PQRSTU. So, PQRSTU, okay, shown in the diagram. It is given that PQ equal to TU. So, PQ equal to TU, okay, these are the same, and SR is X. That is good to know. Now, it may be assumed that PQ and TU coincide and TS and QR have the same length. Okay, TS and QR has the same length. Okay, assuming that. Okay, great. Now, part one, show that the area A enclosed by the wire is given by this. So, how would you find uh, the area? So, first, it, see, it says that the length uh, the length of the wire is 96. So how would you calculate the length? So it will, you will have this. Let's name this y. This also will be y. So let's first find the length. So length has been given to us as 96. But now as you can see the length has been broken down into pieces. Let's begin here. So y plus x plus y plus x and x. So we have two x here 
is supposed to give you 96. So we have to find this value of y. So we have 2y equal to 96 minus 3y. So y is 96 minus 3y divided by 2. This is the length of this rectangle. Now to find area of rectangle, as you know, the formula is length times width. Length is y, which is 96 minus 3y divided by 2 times width is x. That will be 96x minus 3 x square over 2 as your area. This is shown as required. Now for part 2, given that x can vary, find the stationary value of a, determine the nature of this value. So first, we have to find this, as you know, at stationary value, d a by dx is equal to 0. So we first have to find d a by dx. So d a by dx is equal to what? We we'll take out this value first, and then differentiate the inside, you will have 96 minus 6x equal to 0. That will be uh, 96 minus 6x equal to 0. So 6x equal to 96. x is what? 96. That will be 16. Now for this value, we have a stationary value of a. So a will be 96 times 16 minus 3 times 16 square divided by 2. Okay, so 96 answer minus 3 answer square divided by 2. That will be 384 centimeters square will be your, ma your, uh, your stationary value of A. Now you have to find the nature of this value. So to find the nature, we have to find D2A by DX2. So using this, same way, take out the, that will be 0 minus 6 minus 3. It is a negative value. So you can say since D2A by DX2 is less than 0, the stationary value of A is a max value. Okay, and that will be your question numbers. Five. Let's move on to question number six. Find the equation of the normal to this curve at the point where x equal to four. So to find the equation of normal, we first have to find the gradient of normal. To find the gradient of normal, we first have to find the gradient of tangent. Now to find this tangent, we have to find dy by dx. So let's do that. We have y, so we have to find dy by dx. It is equal to, as you can see, it's a fraction. We have to use the quotient rule. So first, we have to leave this one by alone. Differentiate the top, you will have 2x minus. Then we have to leave this one alone. Then differentiate the base, you have 1. And all this divide by x minus 2 squared. Now I'll simplify you will have 2x squared minus 4x minus x squared minus 8 divided by x minus 2 squared. So simplify, 2x minus x will be x squared minus 4x minus 8 divided by x minus 2 x squared. This is your dy by dx. Now from this, we have to find the value when x equal to 4. So let's replace the value of x by 4. So dy by dx when x equal to 4 will be, so we have 4 square minus 4 square minus 8 divided by 4 minus 2 square. That will be minus 2. So this is the gradient of tangent. So since we have that, we can find gradient of normal will be half. So from this, we can find the point where it passes. So at this point, when x equal to 4, what is the value of y? y will be, replaced back in the equation, you will have 
4 squared plus 8 divided by 2, that will be 12. So from this we can find the equation of normal, that will be y minus 12, x minus 4 equal to 1 over 2. So we can cross multiply, you will have this times x minus 4. So you can just leave it like that, it is enough to show that this is your equation of normal, or if you want to you can always expand, you will have 2y minus 24 equal to x minus 4, so 2y to x plus 20. Okay, that will be your question number 6. Let's move on to question number 7. So find the first four terms of this expansion. So pretty easy, first term is 6 choose 0, then we have 2 here and we have x. 0 will be 0, this will be 6, and second term 6 choose 1, 2, x, 1 here, that will become 1, 6 minus 1 is 5, plus 6 choose 2, 2 and x, now we have 2 here, that will be 2, and this will be 6 minus 2 is 4, and the fourth term will be 6 choose 3, 2 and x, that will become 3, and this will be 3 as well. Now if you simplify, uh, this is 1 times 2 power 6 is how much? 2 power 6 will be 64 times 1 plus 6 times 32 times x plus what is 6 choose 2? That should be 15 times 16 times x squared plus 6 choose 3 that should be 20 times 8 times x cube. Now simplify you will have 64 plus 6 times 32 that will be 192 x plus 15 times 16 that should be 240 x squared plus 160 x cubed. Okay so let's see uh, what do we have next. So part 2 hence, hence we have to use part 1 find the coefficient of x cubed. So we only care about the terms in x cubed in this expansion. So here we have these two. So first let's find what is the expansion of these two. 1 plus 3x times 1 minus x. That will become 1 minus x, 10 plus 3x minus 3x squared. This is 1 plus 2x minus 3x squared. So now we have to expand this times this. We have to have 1 plus 2x minus 3x squared times 2 plus x power 6. So if you want to expand this, you will have 1 times this plus 2x times this and minus 3x squared times 2 plus x power 6. Now for each of this expansion, we only care about the term in x cubed. Now 1 times what give you something in x cubed? You have to times this one. So 1 times 160 x cubed. Plus 2x times what? Times this one. That will be uh, 240 x squared. And minus 3 x squared times something in x to give you something in x um, so x something in x cube simplify you will have 160 x cube plus 480 x uh, square sorry cube minus 3 times 192 that is 576 x uh, cube now let's simplify you will have 160 plus 480 minus 576, that will be 64x cubed. So the coefficient is only 64, so your answer is 64 is your coefficient of x cubed in this expansion. And that will be your question number 7. Question number 8, uh, we have a line y equal to 2x minus 8, cut the curve at points a and b, find the length of ab. Okay. So let's do that. So you will have y here 
and you have y here, you have y here as well. So let's replace y in those in those places. So you have 2x square plus 2x minus 8 square minus 5x times 32 equal to 0. If you simplify, you will have 2x square plus 4x square minus 32x plus 64 minus 10x square plus 40x plus 32 equal to 0. Now simplify. So we have x square, x square, x square. So 6 minus 10 will be minus 4x square. Then we have x is minus 32 plus 40. That will be plus 8x. And this plus this will be plus 96 equal to 0. Let's simplify. Divide by minus 4 everywhere you will have x square minus 2x. So 96 divided by minus 4, that will be minus 24. Equal to 0. Now we can factorize. x squared is just x times x. 24 is 6 times 4. So to have minus 2 has to be minus 6 plus 2. Plus 4, sorry. So x can be 6. x can be minus 4. Now find the corresponding value of y. We can just use our equation of the line, which was y equal to 2x minus 8. Now when x equal to 6, that will be 2 times 6 is 12, minus 8 will be 4, and this one will be 2 times minus 4 is minus 8, that will be minus 16. In this case, your point A will be minus 4 minus 16, and B will be 6 or 4. But if you want to write A as this, that's okay as well. It's not a problem. Okay, the question here is to find the length of line AB. So to find the length of AB, you can use your equation. So AB is square root. First one is x2 minus x1, so 6 minus minus 4 square plus y2 minus y1. That will be that will be 10 square root of 10 square plus 20 square. 10 square plus 20 square. That is square root of 500, which is gives you 22.4 correct to 22.4 correct to 3SF. So that will be your answer in decimal place. If you want to, you can always simplify this to 10 root 5 units as well for the answer. That will be your question number 8. Now for question number 9, uh, let's so question number nine we have, it is given that x is any real number in this. First one is your universal set. It is defined from minus 5 till 12. So that is your universal set. So all the values of x are between minus 5 till 12. This is all the values of x. Now first one is values of x such that 5x plus 24 is more than x squared. That is your set S and T will be. 2x plus 7 more than 15. So part 1 is find the values of x inside the set S. So pretty easy. We have 5x plus 24 is more than x squared. So let's uh, bring this one over here. You will have minus x squared plus 5x plus 24 more than 0. So let's, let's make this, this one become positive. Let's divide by minus 1. You will have x squared minus 5x minus 24. Now when you divide by minus, this one becomes less. Now we can find the critical values. That will be factorization equal to 0. x squared is x times x. This is 8 times 3, 8 times 3. Minus 5 will be minus 8 plus 3. x can be minus 3 or x can be 8. So let's see what do we have. So our curve will look something like this. Since this is positive, it will look something like this. This value is minus 3. This value is 8. Now for less than 0, it will be these two values, right? Between those two. So in that case, your x is between minus 3 and 8 for your set S. That is S between 
minus 3 and 8. That is part 1. Now for part 2, you have to find the values of x between, uh, so inside this set of S union T. Now let's see what is T. T is given to you by 2x plus 7 more than 15. So 2x is more than 15 minus 7 will be 8. x is more than the value of 4. Okay, so the set T is the values of x more than 4. So now the set of S union T is what value? So if you look at this, it will be from minus 3. It can be more than 4, sorry. So this will be this. Let me write this again. So from minus 3, it can be more than 4. So if you keep going on, you will have until the value of 12. So minus 3 to 12. This is your set S union T. Now for the final part, we have to find the set of S intersecting T prime. So let's first find this one. So S is given to you from part 2 as between minus 3 and 8 and t is between so it's more than 4 so intersecting will be s intersecting t will be your set from 4 and 8 right because if you observe by your number line this is your s from minus 3 till 8 and your value of t is from 4 keep going on right so only these two coincide which is from 4 till 8 that is your intersecting for these two now we have to find s intersecting t prime which is outside of this now that will be outside so x will be less than 4 and x will be more than 8. So in that case we have two range because we know that the value is only between minus 5 till 12. So if you draw this number line, x has to be between minus 5 and 12. Now x is less than 4, it will be this one. x is more than 8, so 8 will be this one. So basically x is between minus 5 and 4 or it can be between 8 and 12. Okay, That is your two set of values that is defined by uh, by prime, sorry, by s intersecting t prime. This will be your answer for that. And that will be your question number 9. Moving on to question number 11, a plane whose speed in still air is given by 240 km per hour flies directly from A to B, where B is 500 km from A, okay, on a bearing of 32 degrees. So there's a constant wind of 50 km per hour blowing from the west. From the west will be from in this direction, from the west, okay. Now part one, find the bearing on which the plane is steered, so pretty easy. First, let's use this information. Let's see where's the position of A and where's the position of B. So let's say the point A will be, uh, let's say the point A is here. This is your point A. It says B is on a bearing of 32. So how would you draw this bearing? Let's say this is your north line. And this is your horizontal line. Bearing of 32 will be about, let's say, about here. For example, that will be your point, let's say your point B will be right here. So bearing of 32 for A to B. Now the wind is blowing from this direction. So in this direction, we can draw this on top. We can draw this right here in this direction. Now, the next question is, um, it says, so this is 50, so we have to find in which position is the plane steered. So, so when 
there's a wind in this direction your plane cannot fly directly from A to B but it has to fly somewhere before the line so that it can be pushed by the wind to this direction so this will be the direction it won't fly so this is your uh, direction of the plane and this is your wind which is 50 and this is your uh, steel speed will be 240 and that's it that should be it for the now and what is the question is to find the bearing on which the plane is steered so we have to find this angle now to find this angle we first have to find this angle so let's call this one alpha find alpha so if you observe, if this is 32, and if this is 90, this is given to you by what? By 180 minus 90 minus 32, that will be 58. Now, if we know this angle, we can find this angle by using the sine rule. If you look, this is alpha, will be 50, so sine of alpha over 50 is equal to sine of 58 over 240. So let's find the value of alpha. So sine of alpha is equal to 50 sine of 58 divided by 240. 50 sine of 58 divided by 240, that is 0 0.17667. So alpha will be sine inverse of that. So sine inverse, that will be 10.2 degrees. And there's your value of alpha, which is 10.2 degrees. But now for the bearing, it is this angle. So bearing will be 32 minus 10.2. That will be 21.8 for the bearing in which the plane has been steered to go from this point to the point A, B, sorry. That will be your answer for part one. Now for part two is to find to the nearest minute the time taken for the flight. Now if you observe, we know distance AB, so distance we know already. Uh, let's use color blue. So distance of AB has been given to us by 500 km. Now how do you find the speed of A to B? So if you observe here we have triangle A, B, let's call this one C. So A, B, C, we know this angle is 102, one, sorry, 1, 102. What is this angle? This will be the third angle of the triangle. 180 minus 10.2 minus 58. That will be 11, 11.8. This is the angle and we need to find the speed of AB. So V of AB it can be found by using your cosine rule so let's do that so here you have cosine of the angle 111.8 is equal to you have uh, 240 square plus 50 square so 240 and 50 and you have to minus v a b square divided by 2 times 240 times 50 so let's simplify. What is this plus this? 240 square plus 50 square. That is, so you have um, 2240 times 50 cos of 111.8. That will be 60100 minus VAB square. So let's make this the subject of formula. So VAB square is what? is this value minus 2 times 240 times 50 cos of 111.8 that should be 69012.8 so VAB will be the square root of that that will be 262.7 km per hour now if you have the speed you have the uh, distance as you know speed is equal to distance by time so time is equal to distance by speed distance is 500 divided by speed will be 262.7 so 
So 500 divided by answer, that should be 1.903 hours. So we have to find in terms of, of minutes. So this is one is 60 minutes plus this one is so if you minus one. So you have times 60, that will be 54 minutes. So your answer is 60 plus 54, now will be 114. So the time taken is 114 minutes, correct to the nearest minutes. And that will be your question number 10. Question number 11, a one-to-one -one function f is defined by this equation. So if you observe, this is a complete square form. It is x minus a square plus b, right? For x is equal to more or equal to k. Now part one, state the least value of k it can take. So when it says state, it means that we don't need to do any calculation. We just need to find the value from the equation. So k is for x, so you take the value inside. We have x minus 1, equate that to 0, x is equal to 1. So k is equal to 1. So now for you to understand, the usual uh, curve, it looks like this. It will look something like this because we have x squared. If you expand, you will have x squared. It will look like this, right? Now, there's a minimum point. The point is at the value of x equal to 1. Now, for a function to have a to be a one-to-one -one function, it needs to only if you if you draw a line to uh, to the uh, to the function, it only needs to cut at one point for it to be a one-to-one -one function. Now, so in that case, I have to eliminate this side of the of the curve, so I can only have a one-to-one -one function from this point one going forward. So that's why the value of x is one. So x is more equal to 1, so that it is a 1 to 1 function. So that's what it means, the value of k, which is here, can be 1, the least value, so that f can have a 1 to 1 function instead of a 2 to 1 function. 1 to 2, sorry. So that is part 1. Now part 2, write down the range of f. Now for this value of, um, of x or k, what is the range? So in this case, it is given to you already. So when you see write down, it means that it is present in your equation. So it will be this value. So f is your range, is more or equal to minus 5. Because as you can see, the graph goes up. That's why it is more or equal to minus 5. Minus 5 is just the minimum value. So from this, you realize that the minimum point of the curve is 1 and minus 5. That's the minimum point. From that point, it keeps going up. Okay, that is part two. Now, part three is to find the inverse of the function. As always, to find inverse, we have to find let y equal to the function. And we have to uh, make x the subject of formula. So, send five over here, you will have y plus five equal to x minus one square. Now, x minus 1 will be square root of y plus 5. So x is equal to 1 plus root of y plus 5. From this you will have f inverse of x is equal to 1 plus root of x plus 5. That will be your f inverse of x. Now for part uh, 4, sketch and label the graph on the axis below. So the one thing you need to do is, you have to understand that these two graphs will be a reflection in this line. And you have to begin drawing your graph from x, this, because as you can see from part one, it is only defined from this domain, right? Where k is one, so from this point, let's say this is uh, one. So we know that the minimum point is one minus five, so it will be about here, for example. It has to go up in this shape. That's your curve of y equal to f of x. Now, since this two is a reflection in this line, we can just draw it like that. Let me use a different color. So let's, uh, it doesn't need to be exact because it's only a sketch. So let's use 
a measurement. So here we have one and a half, so one and a half will be about here. And then this will be going on like this. It will be about a reflection in this line. And then you have to label this one as your inverse of x. And that is your answer for part 4. Now for part 5 is we have to find the value of x for which this is equal to this. So for where they meet. But now if you observe, where they meet is also the line y equal to x. So in that case we have y equal to x, y equal to f of x, or y equal to f inverse of x. We can just replace those two to find the value of x. So x is equal to f of x from the first part is given to you by x minus 1 square minus 5. Now we can simplify. You will have x is equal to x square minus 2x plus 1 minus 5. So x square minus 2x minus x minus 4 is equal to 0. So x squared minus 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. Now I'll simplify x, x. So 3, that will be uh, 4 times 1. Minus 3 with minus 4 plus 1 equal to 0. Now x is equal to 4 or x is equal to minus 1. So this value cannot be taken because x is only defined for x more than 1. So minus 1 cannot be taken, so your only value of x will be x equal to 4. And that is your answer for question 5, question 11. Question number 12, the function f of x is defined by this expression. It is divisible by x minus 3 and leaves a remainder of 20 when divided by x plus 1. Show that b is equal to 6 and find the value of a. Okay, so one by one. If it is divisible by this, it means that f of 3 is equal to 0, which means f of 3 is equal to 27 plus 9 plus 3a plus b equal to 0. So this will give you what? So 3a plus b is equal to, so 27 plus 9, that will be 36 minus 36. So b will be minus 36 minus 3a. That is your equation number one. And number two will be leaves a remainder of 20 when divided by x plus 1. So f of minus 1 is supposed to give you 20. So let's solve. That will be minus 1 plus 1. And then this will become minus a plus b is 20. So these two goes away. You will have b is equal to 20 plus a. Now let's solve the equation. Let's bring b here. You will have 20 plus a equal to minus 36 minus 3a. Now we send a to one side, you will have 4a equal to minus 56. From this you will have a is equal to what? Minus 5, 6 divided by 4, that is minus 14. And the value of b will be 20 minus 14, that is 6. So b is 6 and a is minus 14. So from this we have the f of x is given by x cubed plus x squared. a is minus 14x plus b, which is 6. Now using your value of a and b, find the non-integer roots of the equation f of x equal to 0 in the form of this, where p and q are integers. Okay, so we have to find the uh, integer roots. So first thing first, we have to find what are the uh, factors of this um, function. If you were to solve them, we have to find the factors, right? So first we have to do long division. We have x cubed plus x squared minus 14x plus 6. So from part 1, you have seen that it is divisible by this. So we divide by this, x minus 3. So first question is, how can you make x become x cubed? You have to multiply by x squared, right? 
you will have x cubed minus 3x squared. That will go away. Then you have 1 minus minus 3 becomes 4x squared minus 14x plus 6. Now the next question is how can you make x become 4x squared? You have to multiply by plus 4x. So multiply this by this, you will have 4x squared minus 12x. So these two goes away. Minus 14 plus 12 will be minus 2x plus 6. Now how can you make x becomes minus 2x? You have to multiply by minus 2. That will become minus 2x plus 6. And that will be 0. And thus your factor will be f of x is equal to x minus 3 and x squared plus 4x minus 2. So by solving this equation f of x equal to 0 which means x minus 3 x squared plus 4x minus 2 equal to 0. What is, what is our solutions? Non-integer roots. So this one is your integer roots. So this one will give you your non-integer roots. So x squared plus 4x minus 2 equal to 0. So since it is a non-integer root, it means it cannot be factorized, we have to use your formula. x is equal to minus b plus minus b squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2a. So x is equal to minus 4 plus minus so b squared minus 4 times that will be 24 root of 24 divided by 2. Now we can simplify this. If you look at 24, what is 24? It is 6 times 4, which is root 4 times root 6, which is 2 root 6. That will be x is minus 4 plus minus 2 root 6 over 2. Now simplify that will become minus 2 plus minus root 6. So that is your non-integer roots in the form of p plus minus root q. So p plus minus root q, where p is equal to minus 2 and q is equal to 6. This is your answer for part 2 of question number 12. And that is the last question of this paper. If you guys have any other questions, leave a comment down below. And as always, thank you for watching. I will see you soon.